In our last lesson, we've learned how to use the least squares method to find the straight line that best fits the historical data in a regression analysis between a dependent variable and one independent variable. Based on this, you've learned that you can expect 3.54 months of bonus if your company makes $8 million profit for this year. Hmm, so how confident are you of this estimate? Let's say the historical data fits very close to your model, you may feel pretty confident about your model. However, if there are large errors in the historical data, you probably won't feel very confident about it. In this lesson, we shall attempt to quantify this level of confidence in the model through two metrics, SEE and R squared. But before we arrive at these two, let's learn the analysis of variance procedure, more commonly known as ANOVA. ANOVA is a statistical procedure for analysing the total variability of the dependent variable. Let's first strip out our regression model. We have a bunch of data points and one meaningful way to measure variability is to reference the distance from the mean of the dependent variable. So if the mean number of months of bonus is 2.4 months, we can measure how variable the data points are from the mean by summing the squared differences between the actual values and the mean. We call this the total sum of squares, or SST, in short. Now let's bring back our regression model. Our model helps to explain part of the variation of the data points from the mean. For example, that this data point is far from the mean can be explained by our model that estimates that the bonus should be 2.88 months because of the high profits for that year. If we sum up the squared distances between the values from the model and the mean, we get the regression sum of squares, or RSS in short. The portion of the total variation that's explained by the regression model is the RSS. However, there is still this variation that's not explained by the model. We can measure the difference between the actual data point and the estimate from our model. Sum them up, and that gives us the sum of squared errors, or SSE in short. If you recall from the last lesson, the least squares method of regression allows us to find the straight line that minimises the SSE. So, we've learnt the SST, RSS, and the SSE. Can you see the relationship between them? Quite clearly, the SST is equal to the RSS plus the SSE, which you can verify numerically here. The intuition here is that the total variation is the sum of the explained variation and the unexplained variation. With that, let's move on to the ANOVA table. In statistics, there's this concept of degrees of freedom. The total number of degrees of freedom is n minus 1, where n is the number of observations. In general, the degrees of freedom for the regression is the number of parameters, which in this case is just one, as there's only one independent variable in a simple linear regression. The degrees of freedom for the error is generally n minus the number of parameters, minus one, which for a simple linear regression is n minus two. To calculate the mean of the sum of squares, we divide the sum of squares by the degrees of freedom. So the mean of the regression sum of squares, MSR, is the RSS divided by K. For a simple linear regression, the MSR is simply equal to the RSS. And to calculate the mean of the sum of squared errors, we divide the SSE by N minus two. And this is the ANOVA table, which allows us to determine how fitting is the regression model to the observed data, which is a factor for how confident we are of the estimations given by the model. There are two approaches to determine the fit of our model. The first approach is to measure the standard deviation of error term, which is equal to the square root of the MSE. We call this the standard error of estimate. Be very clear of the distinction between SEE and SSE. SSE is the sum of the squared errors, while SEE is the standard deviation of the errors. The second approach is to measure how well the model explains the variations. To do this, we compute the coefficient of determination, which is simply the proportion of total variation that can be explained by the regression variation from the mean. The way to interpret the two is this. When the observed data are very close to the regression line, 
the sum of squared errors will be low, so the SEE is low. In the same vein, the explained variation as a proportion of the total variation is larger, which means the R squared is high. Therefore, a low SEE and high R square both indicate that the regression is a good fit, so we should have a higher confidence of the estimates. Conversely, if the observed data are very far from the regression line, then the R squared will be low and the SEE is high, indicating that the regression is a poor fit. Our confidence of the estimates should be low. Now, let's further our understanding with some figures. Given the four observations, where X is your company's profit in millions, Y is the number of months of bonus declared for that corresponding year, and Y hat is the estimated number of months of bonus based on the linear regression model we determined in the last lesson, calculate the standard error of estimate and the coefficient of determination of the model. Pause the video now and work out your answers. And we're back. The total sum of squares is a measure of the variation of observed values from the mean, so the SST is 7.76. The regression sum of squares is a measure of the variation from the mean that's explained by the regression model, so the RSS is 6.9. And the sum of squared errors is a measure of the unexplained variation of the observed values from the estimated value, so the SSE is 0.86. To calculate the standard error of estimate, we plug the SSE into the formula. N is the number of observations, which is 4, so we divide the SSE by 2 and square root it, which gives us a standard error of 0.66. This means that one standard deviation of the error is 0.66 months of bonus. And for the coefficient of determination, we plug in the RSS and the SST we get an R squared of 0.89. This means that 89% of the variation from the mean is explained by the regression model. You're watching an excerpt from our comprehensive animation library. For more videos like these, head on down to prepnuggets.com. At Prep Nuggets, let us do the hard work for you.